Welcome to the End Time Revolution. Broadcasting worldwide on a mission to unite born-again servants to find the army of Elijah's preparing to face Antichrist to witness before all, come what may. This is Wings of the Eagle Radio. Wings of the Eagle Radio, welcome back. It's Christopher Manti with you here in beautiful United States of America on this 22nd day of June, 2018. If you're listening live, that's when it is. And tell me if you are listening live, please. That would be awesome. Show, give me a shout out in the chat area. If you're on the app, Wings of the Eagle app, hopefully you are, or right on the website wingsoftheeagle.com or on Spreaker. All right? Anywhere you're listening to this program, you can make a comment, even if it's not live. Well, if it's not live, you kind of are out of luck because I can't respond. Uh, but be happy to address your concerns. If it is off um, air time and you're just listening on demand, that's fine, and you still have a question, you can email me, radio at wingsoftheeagle.com. Radio at wingsoftheeagle.com. And I'll get back to you. And so, let me try to open up the phones today. 740-337-4774 is the phone number if you'd like to engage that way. Making sure the connection will work. And it's through... uh, Skype, so it's kind of weird, but it has worked, so feel free to try it. Anyways, totally up to you, no problem. I'm trying to sign out. There we go. (laughs) Man. I have one just for the radio show, Skype account, so that turns into a big problem all of a sudden. Okay, thank you for bearing with me. I think. There we go. Okay, now the phone line is up. Seven four. Oi, seven four zero three three seven four seven seven four. And who? I already missed a phone call. That can't be from today's program. <coughs> oh well, I'll find out later. Um, so feel free to engage, okay? If you're on Facebook or Twitter, definitely send me a message there as well. Not a problem. <laughs> My friend Sarah says, I just sent a notification out that uh, the radio is on live. And she's live like in right now? <laughs> yes, live like right now. And, of course, you don't have to listen live. That's the beauty of the what we call podcasting or on-demand listening. You can go to any... By the way, you can do any episode of this program since, I think, since the beginning. So many, many, many moons of programs of Wings of the Eagle Radio. Just go to wingsoftheeagle.com slash radio, and you'll see the entire listing. By the way, we're also on iHeartRadio. If you are familiar with that. Oops. Uh, Please go there and listen to us as well. You don't have to even go to Wings of the Eagle. Anything. Just go to iHeartRadio. Search out the show. Uh, iTunes. You can download the uh, feed automatically. So anytime we come on, you can just hear it on your phone or your device. As well as Google Play. All right. So Android, uh, iOS devices, you know, iPhones, iPads, any type of iTunes-related device, and iHeartRadio. So there's no excuse for you whatsoever for you not to know about this program and to listen to all of them. All of them! 
that's just my humble opinion. Feel free to not do that if you don't want to, but I don't know what why you wouldn't. Okay? Fantastic, Angie. Thank you. My friend Angie from Texas is tuning in. Yes, I say Texas all the time like that. It's just the way it goes. That's a Northeast uh, humor thing. Okay. Very good. Whoever's here, great. I love you all. Um, so what I am talking about today I thought was important. It's kind of nerdy. It's really nerdy, actually. Um, if you're not into the Bible, you have no idea what this is. <clears throat> um, but if you are, and you do have an understanding of the... Um, <laughs> appreciate you. <laughs> I do have a, an understanding of the... Interpretations or understandings or theories about these, what we call the end times, the days, the last days that the Bible speak of, speaks of, days speaks of. Somebody correct me on that. You know, the return of Jesus, the binding of Satan in the uh, Abyss, the bottomless pit, and the lake of fire, and all that stuff, and judgment on the nations, and Israel, and all that. You know that. There are different understandings that have sprouted up over the past 2,000 years of church history. Since the Lord Jesus was walking on the earth, and he is coming back. Number one, that's a... so let's get that out of the way. When we say preterism, preterism, that means the general belief that prophecy has already happened. That the things spoken of in the Bible as futuristic, in other words, yet to come, were yet to come when they wrote it, but already happened today. Right? So it, we're in 2018. The preterist will tell you that the prophecies of the Bible happened 70 A.D., for example. Some of them or most of them. Um, so that's a preterist. It doesn't, it's not future. Either you are a futurist or a preterist. Preterist means it's already happened. Futurist means it has not yet. And obviously there are some things that, you know, you can say, well, this has happened and this hasn't. Okay. Then you're a partial preterist. Why? What is that uh, talking about? Because there's a heresy, and we're not going to get into it other than saying it's a damnable heresy to teach or believe full preterism. What is full preterism? That every prophecy of the Bible is done including the second coming of Jesus. It's already done. It's finished. It happened. Somehow or another, it happened. It all happened. And it's done today. That's heresy. You understand what that means? You're a heretic. You're not a Christian. That's not what the Bible says. I mean, you can believe what you want about it, if but realize that's a heresy. Just like other things that are false. If you believe Jesus was not born of a virgin, that's a heresy. If you believe that he didn't die on the cross, that's a heresy. If you believed he sinned in his life, that's a heresy. If you believe he didn't rise from the dead, heresy. Okay? Easy. The basics of our faith, Jesus was God, by the way, and, you know, fine, that's... You understand it different ways. Maybe that's not a heresy, okay? But was Jesus born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on the cross for our sins, and rose back to life physically three days later, and is coming again? Those things are what you'd call orthodox belief, or just Christianity. (laughs) That's Christianity. All of those. If you deny any one of those, you are a heretic. 
You're not a Christian. I don't know what you are, but you're not a Christian. Okay? You're something. You're a cult leader or something. All right? And full preterism, which, di- and thankfully there aren't many out there. Um. Excuse me. I just mowed the lawn. I'm thirsty. Um. Thankfully, there aren't many folks who believe full preterism anymore or ever. But they're out there. And they're heretics. Okay? Jesus has not come yet. And the Bible is filled with promises, promises and prophecies and things that have not happened. Now, depending on where you fall on the scale, you say some are left or most are left or wherever. Okay? So you're more or less, there's this line of future versus past. Fancy words are preterism and futurism. Which is yet to come and which have already happened. Okay, you're somewhere in there. The the average preterist will say almost everything is done. Almost, 70 AD did almost everything. Accomplished all the words of Jesus. The Great Tribulation was in 70 AD. I'm sorry, it's just hilarious. But anyway, they believe that. And um and there's nothing left really except the second coming and the judgment of the living and the dead and the casting of Satan into the lake of fire. Those types of things. The very, very end of the book. Those are the only things that are left to happen. That's a preterist. And again, even even in um within that strain that theory and it's a theory it's not the truth um within that there are various degrees varying degrees of what exactly is left to happen and a lot of it centers around the very 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 clear scriptures about the millennium what is the millennium it means a thousand years it's greek for a thousand years the thousand-year period, talked about in Revelation 19, 20, 21, um, where, it's, where it's explicitly stated that the dead are raised, that the resurrected saints live and reign with Jesus Christ on the earth for a thousand years. And they rule the earth. Satan, at this time, is bound in the abyss. Your Bible may say bottomless pit. You you can't get out of there, okay? Unless God says you can get out. And at the end of the thousand... This is all in Revelation 20, especially. Go read it. And at the end of the thousand years... Satan is loosed. He's released from this prison, the abyss, to deceive the world one last time and to invade Jerusalem, by the way, one last time, the holy city. And God puts a final stop to him at that time and sends him into the lake of fire. And there's no, there's no, there's no after that, right? The lake of fire is the, is the end. No more Satan. Okay. Okay. Um so here so that's called the thousand years that's called the millennium. Now <clears throat> over the centuries this was not let me stress this to you. I know there's a lot of misinformation about this. The the original okay the um I hate to say original church but the first believers. Why not original church? Um they did not believe that they were in the thousand years. <laughs> they just didn't. There's writings. Um, they were expecting Jesus to come soon. They didn't know when, but they thought there were some signs, like the man of sin or the Antichrist, as we call him, to be unleashed on the world. And a time of great tribulation would come, and then Jesus would return. 
to rule for a thousand years. Decades and went on, and Jesus didn't come when the Antichrist didn't come. <clears throat> so now we're two and three hundred years on, and a lot of these quote unquote smart guys said, wait a minute, we're waiting too long for this. Maybe we misunderstood the whole thing. And I I applaud that effort. You know, trying to be humble and, and question what you think you know and all. That's good. Because I've done that and it's very fruitful. If you're willing to stick with the word of God and not your imagination. That's the problem. They imagined, all of a sudden, that the thousand year period, they couldn't stomach the fact that Jesus wasn't coming yet. They're thinking, oh, wait a minute, maybe. He, even though it says it, even though it says it, he didn't, it doesn't really mean that Jesus comes before the thousand years. In fact, the, when it says he returns on the white horse and conquers all his enemies, maybe that's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> okay. Maybe that was Pentecost. And ever since then, we, the church, we especially, remember this time is when the there was no such thing as the Catholic or Orthodox churches or any name of like that. It was just what your city was. Where you were, that was your church. Um, but now we're, you know, Constantine area, era, and and Augustine and things like this. So hundreds of years later, now the uh, people were inventing things, and it says kings and priests, so uh, for a thousand years. So I guess we're the priests, and the thousand years is today. That's what it was. That's how they came up with it. So in order to bloat their self-importance up, and say this, we the priests of the, uh, eventually called the Catholic Church, the Church, we the priests are the priests of Revelation 20. Yes, that's us. And the celebration, the weekly mass that we have, the, the church that we gather, and the ceremony that we do is actually playing out this whole thing over and over and over again. And Jesus will come eventually, but we don't know when. We don't know what signs are going to come. He'll just show up. And the thousand years will be over at that point because when he comes, he's going to judge the living and the dead, and that's the end. That's Satan's end and all that. I say okay. Well, that's that's called... Hey, Vitor. Welcome, sir. Matt. Welcome, brothers. Sorry I didn't see you there. <sighs> Got another little roll. Um, Vitor called me pastor. Well, uh, that's Sunday. I guess, technically, I'll be ordained Sunday, so pray for me. If you're listening before then. Or even after, I'll still take it. Um, <sighs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, so this is what we call, the fancy word for that is amillennialism or amillennialism. Some people say postmillennialism. The point is, the belief that the thousand years spoken of in the book of Revelation, which is very crystal clearly said, it's clearly stated that the resurrection happens, and then there's a thousand years on the earth with Jesus and the priests and saints, call them what you will, priests and kings, it calls them, the saints, the believers, okay? They rule for a thousand years on the earth. That's a quote from the Bible, on the earth, not in heaven. So Jesus is on the earth with the saints. So they've spun it's been spun over the centuries to mean, well, it doesn't really mean that. It means spiritually on the earth. And the priests, oh definitely, we're definitely physically literal on the earth. It, that's me, right? Well, that's me, the Catholic priest, if really if you really get down to it. Um but no one else, okay? And we're gonna rule the earth. And make it great, again, <laughs> until Jesus finally does come and end this whole thing. That's amillennialism, amillennialism. All right. <clears throat> That's the millennium is not literal. And by the way, it didn't start out like that. Because they said, well, it's a thousand. Yes, it's still a thousand years long. It's just that not as we thought. That's why a thousand A.D. or 1030 A.D. and things like These were important dates because the church thought... Well, thousand years are over now. Jesus is coming. Obviously not. So, oh, uh, I guess we're going to rethink this again. So instead of going to the scriptures, they went to their imagination and tradition. 
said, well, some really smart guys, like 300, you know, 500 years ago said it's not literal, so I guess the whole thing isn't literal, and a thousand doesn't mean a thousand. A th- the word thousand years doesn't mean a thousand years. It means for I don't know how long. It could mean 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, 10,000, because God is stupid. Okay, God is dumb. God doesn't know what he's talking about. When he said a thousand years, it just means whatever. Of course, they'll never say that or even admit that. But what else are you saying? It's not literal. It's an allegory. Oh, here we go. Nothing means anything if it's an allegory. It's a thousand year period where dead people come back to life and they reign on the earth with Jesus on the earth. So, look, I mean, I get it, it's log- I get the logic. Okay, well, he's not really here. He's, I don't get it. I mean, I don't. If you're talking, you got that from there? You got that from Revelation 20? 19, 20, 21? You, seriously? That's, how do you get that? You know, because it's not. You have to add stuff on later. And there's this very stern warning in the book itself at the end of Revelation. It says, don't add to this. Because God's going to add to the punishments therein, right? You're going to be punished for it. Don't do it. But they did it, and in Proverbs even it says, "Just don't, just do, just don't." Okay, <laughs> it's a paraphrase. Just don't, don't add to it, please. <sighs> so that's amillennialism or amillennialism, however you want to pronounce it. All right, it means it's not literal. I get it, but I don't get it. Okay, I understand the theory. It's not. I don't see how the Bible can give you that theory, but I, I understand the theory. All right, here's the thing about that. And th- again, this is a preterist view. Okay, this is why I say preterism slash amillennialism is the same thing. It because they are. They're saying the thousand year period has started. It's in the past, or it's ongoing. It's right now. It's an allegory, so it's happening today. So the beginning of the thousand years, where the Bible says Jesus starts it by coming on a white horse and binding Satan in the pit, in the abyss, that's in the past. So if you think that's in the past, oh, that's at the cross, brother. He bound Satan. Okay. Um, well, which is it? Did he return at the cross? Or, like, what the heck happened there? Anyways, um, so if you think that's in the past, then you're a preterist. For that, for that portion. So you're a partial preterist. The only thing left to you, if you think the millennium is not literal, the only thing left to happen basically is Jesus to return and judge the living and the dead, and that's it. Then new heaven and new earth, okay? So you have some prophecy there. There's some, some things that are written in both Revelation and the Old Testament, by the way. I'm not even going there today. But the new heavens and new earth is in Isaiah. And a ton about the millennial reign. Look at Ezekiel 40 through 48. Look at any of the prophets. They all talk about the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is a thousand years long. The day of the Lord is a thousand years. Anyways. So we're not going to even touch the Old Testament stuff. Um, so that there's a little bit left. So a partial preterist basically means almost everything done. Okay? Almost everything. They they admit that Christ hasn't come back yet. Thank God. You know. Whew. You're not a heretic. You, you're right on. You're, I mean, I kind of beg to differ, but still, you're you're right on the border. You're, the border. You're straddling the fence. You want to say, ah, I don't have a, all that stuff is in the past. I don't want to worry about it. Is what you really mean? I don't want to think about it. I don't want to study it. I don't want to try to understand that. God's already taken care of it. It's done. Forget forever. It's done. Israel irrelevant. We're the church. We're the new Israel. Blah 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 blah. And that's what it leads to, by the way. Amillennialism leads to replacement theology, which leads to hatred of the Jews and killing of the Jews. That's sorry, that's what it does. That's what it has done. It's history proves it. Proves it. If you personally aren't there yet, well, great, but people do get there. And it's a logical outcome. Logical conclusion. It is. So don't do it. That's my suggestion. All right, we're going to take a small break, and then I will actually come back and disprove so easily both those the, the preterist 
uh, slash a millennial teachings. Very, very easy to disprove. And then we'll tell you why it's important to do that. All right, be right back. Taking the light to the gathering darkness, this is Wings of the Eagle Radio. Broadcasting around the world. All around the world. We're available at the App Store and on Google Play. Download now for free. Anywhere, anytime. It's that easy. Thanks for listening. And now, Wings of the Eagle Radio. All right, Christopher Manti, Wings of the Eagle Radio, three, uh, what is our number? 740-337-4774. Let me know you're there if you're chatting, like Vitor and Matthew, out in the world, wherever you are. So thank you, brothers and sister. I know Angie's out there as well. Sarah, hopefully, is out there, uh, too. And whoever else, uh, thank you, and God bless you. In the name of Jesus, I say, be blessed today. To any who are listening. Right? Maybe you don't accept that Jesus is the Messiah, by the way, and that he is risen from the dead. I hope you do, because he is. And he's coming again. So my message is the king is coming and he's offering terms of surrender on your part. Terms of peace. Take it. And repent of your sin. Follow him as your Lord. And then you'll be at peace with God. You will not be at war with him anymore. You'll not be under the wrath of God, because if you won't, then you are. Okay? All right. Uh, Chat with me again if you want, or email me uh, radio at wingsoftheeagle.com. All right, here we go. So how do we disprove it? It's the, honestly, I don't know. It's just, you know, the way my brain works, whatever. It's so easy to me. I mean, like amazingly easy. The let's let's real quick look at Revelation twenty and where this. If you believe the um, millennium is not literal, if you believe it's a allegory and a thousand years doesn't mean a thousand years. I'm, I'm sorry, that sounds like Satan, doesn't it? Did God really say? Does a thousand really mean a thousand? Come on, that can't be right. Anyway, um, okay, Revelation 20, verse 1 through 3. Then I saw an angel. This is then, what, what do you mean, then? Because Jesus just returned the white horse, Revelation 19. And he waged the battle of Armageddon. And the false prophet and the beast were cast alive into the lake of fire. And he defeated all the enemies of Israel and the church. Okay, now, then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, to the abyss, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon. This angel who came down from heaven is now grabbing the dragon. There's almost no doubt this is Michael, the archangel Michael. He laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan. By the way, if you read Revelation, you see the word dragon, don't be confused. It's the devil. It's Satan. It's Satan. Okay, period. Uh, the dragon, the serpent of old, the serpent from the garden is what this means. The serpent from of old ancient time, the ancient serpent. This is Satan from the garden of Eden. Again, not a snake. Satan. All right. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Again, you say, well, it's an allegory, friend. It's not really a thousand years. Fine. It's however long this millennial period lasts. Satan is bound, and he cast him, this angel, cast Satan into the abyss, the bottomless pit, and shut him up, or closed the door, the lid, and set a seal on him, So that he should not, or he should deceive the nations no more, not deceive the nations, until the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. So after the thousand years, he'll be let out, or at the end of the thousand years, he'll be let out from this prison. And you read of that uh, down in verse uh, 8, 7. 
Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison, and he will go out to deceive the nations in the four corners of the earth. Yada, yada. Okay? So now, if you believe we're in the millennium today, and it's not over yet, because it says in thousand years have expired, then he gets out. All right, so if, if you're in the millennium today, if this is an allegory, if we've been in the millennium, the thousand years for the past 2,000 years or however long, if you believe that, then you believe that Satan is bound in the bottomless pit and cannot deceive the nations because it says that. You think the allegory is the thousand years, but you think this is literal. You have to. My question is this. You say, well, Satan was bound at the cross. Again, with the cross, okay, his power was taken away over souls who believe in Jesus. What about those who don't? He's not bound. Does it say bound from believers only? Or for believers? Does it say shut in the abyss in the bottomless pit for some of the earth to deceive some of them no longer? If you believe we're in the millennium, you believe Satan is bound in the bottomless pit today. And he can't get out. And he can't deceive the nations. Think about that. Think about that. Now think about this. Especially that my Catholic friends or Orthodox who revere St. Peter. And you should. Peter's the man, right? The chief of the apostles. The one who Jesus commissioned in John. Feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, right? What does he... You think he would know about this a little bit? You think it, he if he if he would know that if the cross is the one that sealed up Satan so he couldn't deceive the nations, don't you think Peter himself would have known this? Peter wrote this after the crucifixion, after the ascension to heaven, after Pentecost. So after the Holy Spirit had come, in other words, the millennial teaching would have applied. In other words, if if you think the the thousand years is an allegory, it's not literal, then when Peter wrote these words, we were in the millennium. Listen. It's how you disprove it. First Peter chapter five verse eight. Everyone should know this regardless. Be sober. Talking to you, believer. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary that means what? Satan. The devil walks around. Like a roaring lion, seeking who he may devour. Resist him. Verse 9. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Hmm? What's that? The devil Satan walks about like a lion throughout the whole world. All the nations are free to be deceived by Satan. Huh. That's weird. Because we just read that in the millennium, Satan is restricted and bound. The word bound and tied up is the opposite of the word free and walks about. Free to walk, put in jail. Free, prison. Walk around every nation, bound from every nation. Pick one. If we're in the millennium today, Peter is a liar. Is that what you want to believe? Are you so smart to call Peter a liar? 
And here's this, Peter is the same one who tells you the day of the Lord is a thousand years long. God is teaching you, preterist, through Peter. Listen up and correct your theology. Look at other, you find, you don't, that was the New King James Version, which I teach out of, but stay alert. Watch, let's do 1 Peter 5, 8 and other translations. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion. NIV, prowls around like a roaring lion. ESV, your adversary prowls around like a roaring lion. Christian standard, your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a, what is a prowling lion? He's not restricted at all. He's hunting. He's hunting. He's in secret. He's totally free to go wherever he wants because he's hunting you. He's laying in the weeds. In fact, he's the opposite of in prison where everyone knows where he is. Every The whole world's going to know where he is. Isaiah talks about this in Ezekiel in this time. We're, again, I'm not going to go there today. But the point is, this is a Satan, the devil, will be bound up for the world to see. Everyone will know he's there. And it'll be funny, really, to the saints. This is the, this is the guy. This is the one we're afraid of. Um, but we're not there yet. So prowling around where nobody knows where he is is the complete. It's not just a little different. It's the opposite of chained in the abyss, in the bottomless pit with a seal on him, so he can't get out and he can't deceive the nations. Pick one. NASB. Prowls around like a roaring lion. New English. On the prowl. Like a lion. RSV. Prowls around. Roaring lion. ASV. Walketh about. As a lion. Walketh about. Young's literal translation. Doth walk about. Darby. Walks about. Webster. Walketh about. I mean, on and on and on. It's, this is how you disprove it. If the millennium is now, Peter lies. Peter's a liar. He's a false prophet. Peter is a false prophet. That is what you have to say. You have no choice. That's how you just prove it. Okay? So, and that's it. End of end of discussion. All right? Don't even worry about the, is a thousand years literal, or is it symbolic, or is who's the priest, and did Jesus return, or this is the Holy Spirit. Just for, look, is the devil free or not? If he, can he tempt you? <laughs> is he accusing you? Uh, well, he's very free then. Accuser of the brethren. What does that mean? He's accusing you day and night, it says. He's free. It's good gravy. Come on. Does it mean you're, you're, you're doomed to be condemned, you know, that your charge from him will be accepted by God? If you're a Christian, it's not. It's thrown out. Thrown out of court. Not a problem. We cast out the demons that are here. Those are Satan's, uh, his army, his henchmen. But Satan's in heaven. I mean, that's his home base. Is he free to come and go? Look at the book of Job. He says, hey, Satan, where have you been, bro? <laughs> Paraphrase. Ah, you know, here and there, about walking up and down the earth. Up and down the earth because he's free to do it. So, what is your problem, preterist? A millennialism, a millennialism. Give me a break. This is the easy. Well, this is one of the easiest things to get right. It's. I understand you don't like probably, to admit that there's a thousand years still coming because it means you're not the priest you think you are. Yes, we can be a kingdom of priests, but it's not realized yet. Have you noticed? 
We have enemies who can come cut your head off. That, that's not going to be allowed in the kingdom of God. In the, in the millennial kingdom, that's not permitted. You'll be resurrected. That's the first thing, it, right? The Satan is bound, and then the the resurrected saints, those who have been beheaded, will come to life and reign with the Lord for a thousand years. Ah. <laughs> How do you get around that one, you know? Now, the to to a modern believer who, you know, thinks for themselves and has access to the Bible and 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 broadcasts like Wings of the Eagle Radio might think, well, this is stupid. How is anyone a pre- this must be a very minor belief, this amillennial or preterist thing. No, it's not. It's the major belief of all the church. Yep. Yep. If you took every, I mean, throughout the world, all nations combined, every Christian denomination together, and yes, I'm including Catholics in there, Catholics, Orthodox, Lutherans, everyone, everyone together, the majority of Christians in the world believe a thousand years is not literal. They were in it today, and that Peter's a liar. That's the majority of the church. Now, in the West, the Western Europe, in America especially, you, you would say, what? Wait a minute. Everyone I know is a pre-tribulation rapture teacher or something. Well, that's a very, a very new invention. And it hasn't had time to catch on, like 2,000 years of, or, you know, 1,700 years of amillennialism. This, this pre-trib rapture thing is only about 150 years old, if that. And it's only gotten really popular the past, like, 40 years. And thankfully, I think, with the tides beginning to turn on that, because there is no pre-tribulation anything, <laughs> rapture or otherwise, we're going to be here for it unless you die. So, um, that's, you know, in America you think, well, this is a minor problem with some, no, it's not. Now, there might be individuals who, you know, go against their teaching of their denomination, and that's always true. There's always someone who will go against it. But the official teaching of the Catholic Church, the Orthodox Church, uh, the Lutheran Church, Anglicans, they're all a millennial. They all think the millennium is today. You were in it. They're deceived. All of them. I don't know how else to put it. And some of them are heretics because they think there's nothing to come and maybe Jesus is never coming. That's heretic. And unfortunately, I know very, very well, I know some who do think that. That's that's not Christian, okay? So even, but even the, the deception of amillennialism or preterism is huge because the major denominations have taught it for over a thousand years. <laughs> Ironically, all right? So that's a huge, huge dilemma. And that's why you have to teach against it. That's why you have to whip out, you know, what we just covered in First Peter chapter 5, for example. To disprove it. To say, dudes, hey, it ain't over. Okay? We haven't even begun the millennium. And you're thinking all that's left is Jesus to judge the dead and the living and new heaven and new earth. You got another thing coming, friend. Big time. And and when they think, oh my gosh, maybe I was wrong about this whole thing. And, and maybe that means Israel is important and the Jews have a role. And oh my gosh. But again, we're not, you know, this Wings of the Eagle and the End Time Church, by the way, which is just starting up and we're about to go public. Not, not just yet, but if you've been invited, I love fellowshipping with you the past couple Mondays. And uh, join us again this Monday. But um, you know, we will not be apologetic in our eschatology, fancy words. All right? We're not going to beat around the bush. We are not pre-millennial, uh, excuse me, pre-tribulational. There is no rapture before the tribulation. Period. The end. We're going to have to endure the whole thing until Jesus comes back. That's what the Bible teaches. So that's what we're going to teach. And we're not 
a millennial. Okay, we are pre-millennial. We know it's, it's self-evident, thanks to Peter and a lot of other places, that we are not in the millennium right now. And the return of Jesus is the event that begins the millennium. Duh. The day of the Lord. That's coming. It's going to be a great and terrible or dreadful day, depending on which side you're on. So, um, yeah, we're going to be unapologetic about it. We're not, what again, fancy word, dispensational. That That is another way of saying pre-tribulational. In other words, there's a, quote, church age and an age for Israel, and only when the church is removed from the earth magically, then God will deal with Israel like he can't do it at the same time. So we're not dispensational. We're not you know, pre-tribulational. Oh, okay, there's no rapture coming until resurrection. It's the same event, same thing. So uh, that's not happening. And But there is a millennium coming, so we are pre Millennial, what we call historical premillennialist. What is that fancy, again, fancy word? It just means we believe the thousand years is a literal time and it hasn't begun yet. But before that, the church will have to endure the great tribulation of the Antichrist. That's it. So we are, and all the signs that precede the second coming, that's, we're going to see them and participate in them even, if you're willing. In other words, how are you going to react to it? How are you going to receive these signs of the times? What are you going to do about it? How would God have you act? How would you be called upon to witness, to to evangelize the nation of Israel, for example, or the Muslims who are being used by Satan on the opposite side of this whole thing? That's that's about that's about all I can say about it because that's all there is. It's it's rotten. It stinks that this is an issue because you know your average person just reading the scripture for themselves. There's no way they're going to say the millennium is today. They know better. It's common sense. It's just explicitly said. It's not It's not in poetic language. It's straight language. It's not a, it's not a parable. Like when Jesus says, well, in the coming kingdom, if you've been faithful and little, I'm going to give you ownership of ten cities. Why, is, that a, is that a parable? No, it's not. That's why it says you're going to reign as a king for a thousand years. Because you're going to have cities. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay. But it, again, that's the, you know, that's the, oh my gosh, that's the uh, l- easiest understanding. That can't be right. You see, it's all a metaphor. And uh, all the smart people know that it's really not literal and uh, you can't actually have all these things. That, uh, da, da, da. These are the same type of thoughts that the Pharisees had. Because they're, we're too smart. We're too cool for school. We don't we don't realize that when it says he's going to be born in Bethlehem, it means he was born in Bethlehem. Uh, when it says he's going to go to Egypt, um, it means he's going to be taken to Egypt. Um, they didn't believe that he's going to grow, you know, uh, come out of Nazareth or be the uh, Lion of Judah or any of that. Well, it it all happened exactly that. Way. It didn't say, "Oh, crucify the Messiah." Psh, no way. That's not the. That's not. That's not what it means. Don't you see? This is the same darn thing. Yeah, there's no way. The Messiah is not going to get crucified and die for our sins. That's not the proper reading of Isaiah 53. Or Daniel 9. Or Psalm 22. Nah. That can't be right. That's an allegory. That's an allegory. The Messiah is not going to have that happen to him. He's just going to come and glory, judgment, deliver Israel and defeat our enemies. And that's that. It doesn't mean, God didn't really say that, or he didn't mean that. Yeah, yeah, I know what it says, but it's not literal. It can't be right. It's We know better than that. We have tradition. That's exactly what this uh, amillennial preterist crap 
is. Pharisees. Distorting the plain, simple word of God because of tradition. That's it. It's wrong. It's not only wrong, it's false, it's satanic. It's satanic. What what greater um, satanic trick than to say, hey, even though I'm loose and prowling around like a lion, I'm going to convince them that I'm locked up. That's the ultimate. I mean, all, it's pretty much the ultimate. There's only one more greater lie that he's going to foist on us, and that's that he is Jesus himself. He is the Lord, and that's what the tribulation's all about. Satan will either himself or be possessing a man who will claim, yes, I am Jesus here, look at my miracles. That's the height of it. But second place is this. I think. All right, so challenge the folks. Let them know why it's wrong and why they need to change their thought on this. Because the Lord is raising an army of those who understand, not those who are ignorant and who are flailing through life just hoping to die or hoping to get through it and Jesus will come one day and judge the living and the dead and that's the end. That's not how it's going to happen. Problem, okay? Problem. So preach it. Be faithful with it. Don't be afraid. Um, Debating whether to take a break or not. All right, one more break and we'll be right back. Wings of the Eagle brings the truth of Jesus Christ and Bible prophecy to the world by facilitating a free global communications network for the saints and publishing teaching that will educate and exhort believers and witness to non-believers. We will never be afraid or a respecter of persons. If you believe in this mission, partner with us by donating financially now. Your donations are vital to pay for Wings of the Eagle platforms and infrastructure which we need to operate. Please donate today and help keep us on the forefront of the battle until he returns. Both one-time and monthly gifts are greatly appreciated and necessary. God bless you. Taking the light to the gathering darkness, this is Wings of the Eagle Radio. Yeah, man, Wings of the Eagle Radio, uh, saying goodbye. Uh, I just wanted to come back and, and yes, um, indeed let you know that we are on the forefront of this stuff. We are unafraid, unapologetic, um, and we hope you can join us in this. Even if you're not, you know, uh, vocal yourself, that you would contribute to our ministry. Please go to wingsoftheeagle.com/slash/donate, and you can choose your method of of support and how much and how often, all that stuff. And if you're in America, you can even do it directly from your bank account. You don't even need to use a credit card. Uh, there's a PayPal option as well. We don't prefer that because they take extra fees, but whatever. Um, so please, you know, pray about that, okay? And just so, again, just so we all know, and Angie made a comment to little Levin. Levin's the whole lump. That's right. That's right. It screws the whole thing up. The whole shebang is messed up of, of prophecy. Um... And and the just the future, just the plan of God. You screwed it all up, a millennialist preterist. You screwed it up, and you're screwing it up for millions of people. Millions have fallen victim to this false teaching, and it's important that we not believe it anymore. Okay, um, but I didn't call them heretics, right? I kept that to the full preterism, which is heresy it's heresy um okay so by the way again like i mentioned before we are beginning to ramp up this end time church uh which is an online church we uh, jake mccandless and i were given a vision by the lord uh to do this and it's the uh, you know i don't want to overstate it i don't want to oversell it you know or or say something that's false but it's as far as we can tell, it's the first ever church established exclusively for online worship. It's not It's not a physical church with an online broadcast. It's not a physical plant of a church somewhere or a network of churches somewhere that has this online fellowship option. No, there is no physical location. We are everywhere at once. 
the whole world can fellowship at one time. This is the purpose of it. It's not a nice add-on. It's the purpose. Because of the fact that we can't all meet, that we're not all safe to meet, that we don't have a church. Some of us just don't have a church that believes any type of right doctrine, crying out loud. Everyone's an amillennialist or pre-trip rapture. Where the heck do you go? Now, it doesn't mean you have to agree on every point of your local church. You love your local church. You serve at a congregation that believes the Bible and, and tries to live by it. It doesn't mean every doctrine has to be correct. But um, part of the end time dot church, part of our mission is to serve those who are disaffected and disgruntled and frustrated that there is no proper teaching of end time stuff. There's no understanding that the millennium is still coming and that there's no rapture first. It's simple. I mean, these are like... Not too hard to understand, but yet the vast majority of believers in the world are deceived into one of those camps, and most of them into this amillennialism. Okay, there's no, the millennium is now, junk. So um, join us if you would like. Um, we're going to have an open invitation uh, starting on July the 16th. <laughs> Whoops. July 16th will be when we actually launch. Um, right. So that is, what did I say? The 22nd. So we've got one, two, three before then with what we're calling our launch team. All right. Um, if you want in on that, go to endtime.church. There's a form. You can fill out at the bottom of the uh, homepage. And it's not endtime.com. Okay. That's Irvin Baxter. That's another guy. It's another ministry, not us. Endtime.church. Not dot church.com. Okay. It's dot church is a real website. Go, go to it. Endtime.church. If you don't believe, go to Facebook, type in endtime.church. We have a group page, which is where Angie is communicating. Oh, no, that's not true. It's Wings of the Eagles page. Excuse me. But anyway, she's there too. Uh, we have a group page set up and a church page set up. So it's out there. And you'll know the logo once you see it. There's a black flame one and a white flame one. Again, we want to fire the Holy Spirit. We want to recapture the essence of the first century church, not just to b replicate what they were doing, but to to join in their desire for the second coming, to burn with passion and desire to, to preach that, yes, the end times is part of this whole Christian walk. And we can't separate from it no matter how hard we want to. No matter how afraid you are of it, get over it. Get over it. So Jake McCandless and Christopher Manti are going to pastor this church and we hope you can join us in that starting uh, July 16th. Or again, if you're part of this launch team or if you're invited by one of the launch team members, please fellowship with us Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's it. All right. So I love you. If you have any questions out there, concerns or problems, let me know now because we're ready to go. Okay. So... Again, love you so much. Hopefully we've um, related why it's very important to challenge this false belief, to say that it is false, uh, to prove it, and then to hopefully grab some folks out of the fire here because things are going to get real and we're going to need soldiers and warriors who know what's going on. Okay? We know what's happening. So hopefully you're one of them. Pray about it. Pray about supporting Wings of the Eagle and attending the End Time Church and see what happens from there. All right? I love you all. Thank you so much for your time, and I pray now, Father, in the name of your Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. He is the Messiah of Israel and of all who believe. And as believers, we are grafted into the promises of Israel, including the kingdom to come, which is the thousand years yet to begin. And we ask for strength, perseverance, blessing of every kind, the fruit of the Spirit to be evident in all our daily lives, wherever we go, whatever we do, in Jesus' name, I ask. Amen. All right, folks. Get with you next week. This has been Wings of the Eagle Radio. Until next time, pray always. Meet with others who know what's coming. Join the free network at wingsoftheeagle.com and spread the word. The destiny of the final generation of the saints of God draws near.